Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, go through sort of an introduction to glycolysis, an overview of the process, and a, and a breakdown of some of the major reactions um, in a very simplified form. So the first thing you need to know about glycolysis uh, is the equation that we're going to go through. So it, we're going to have glucose, which is over here. We'll talk about its structure in a second. Uh, it's going to require two ATP. So even though the process uh, is going to help us store and release some energy in the cell, um, it's going to need some energy to get started in the process. It's also something that's required. Sometimes people leave out in some of the simplified um, explanations of it. But it's uh, something called NAD+, which you may or may not be familiar with. So NAD+, is an electron carrier. And the reason it's so important is because it's, it's really where we're going to be looking in glycolysis, um, pyruvate oxidation, and the citric acid cycle for the flow of electrons, which is really where energy is going to be transferred. We make very, we make very few ATP during these processes. Most of the ATP is made after they're all done. So a question might be, well, then where does the energy come from then to make that ATP if it's not coming directly from the glucose? It's going to be directly coming from these electron carriers. So the electrons are going to be carrying the energy. So we want to pay attention to them, where they are, uh, where they're coming from, where they're going to, because that's really how we're going to be following the energy as it moves through these processes to eventually uh, make the majority of the, the ATP. So glucose. 2 ATP, and it's actually, I should put 2 here. Uh, we're going to need 2 uh, of these NADH molecules. And then from these reactions, what we're going to uh, produce are 4 ATP are going to be made. So we cost 2, but we're going to make 4, so we're only going to gain 2. Right? The, dif the difference is going to be a gain of 2. We're going to make 2 molecules called NADH, so the difference here, it's going to pick up two electrons. So it's going to carry two electrons and then also a proton um, to, to give it the, the extra hydrogen here. So this is what's we're going to be following those electrons. Uh, and then as another product, the glucose is going to be broken down. Now glucose starts off as a six carbon molecule. Glycolysis, or some people have I've heard uh, pronounce it glycolysis. And, and that's not completely wrong in that lysis means to break, and that's the way it's pronounced. Um, glyco, sugar, so to break a sugar, and that's that's sort of what the process is. We're going to split the six carbon sugar in half into two three carbon molecules. Um, and, and these two three carbon molecules um, are called pyruvate. And that's what we're going to end with as a, as a product. We're going to want to look at pyruvate structure as well because it's going to become important. This is the basic equation. You should know this equation. You need to be able to write it out, answer specific questions, how many NADH are made in glycolysis, how many ATP are made, and then know the difference between how many are made and how many are, are gained, because you're only going to gain two. What we're going to do, though, now is kind of step through some of the reactions. Now, there are 10 actual reactions in glycolysis. I'm not going to show them uh, all. Uh, we're going to skip a few. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, the six carbon glucose one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, we're going to reduce it to just a skeletal structure. So we're just going to be following the carbons. Although we're interested in oxidations, and when those ox oxidations occur, which is a loss of electrons, they're not going to come from the carbon. The electrons are going to come from the hydrogens. But in this initial drawing, I'm not going to put those together just so you get an overview. I'm going to do a second uh, lecture that shows the actual structures and you'll see in those how the molecules change uh, when the oxidations occur and the oxygens and the hydrogens and those sorts of things. And that's a little more advanced, more, more of a really more biochemistry heavy. This At this level, if you're in intro biology or intro cell biology, you should be able to do what I'm about to do right now. It's not really going to be that, that difficult. So first we're going to take this and simplify it. Okay, So we're going to say we're going to have six carbons number them one two three four five six it's good to number them because as we start to name a few of the molecules we're not going to name everything in the process but as we name some of the molecules in the process uh, the numbers of the carbons are going to be part of the name of the molecule that we're looking at so uh, it's important to do that so each carbon should have an oxygen 
and then there'd be the the hydrogens there would be a double bond but we're not going to go through again all those right now this is going to be our representation our skeletal representation of glucose okay just as a six carbon skeleton to see the reactions of glycolysis first thing that's going to happen is an ATP is going to be used. So there's an enzyme here called hexokinase. Hexokinase is going to bind the ATP. It's going to bind the glucose molecule. It's going to break off one phosphate from the ATP. And it's going to leave as a DP diphosphate. Five, six, one, two, four, five, six. And I'm going to have down here a phosphate from the ATP attached to the number six carbon. This is called glucose six phosphate. You should know that. that that's, a, that's an important name. That's an important step. Uh, it'll, come, it'll come back in, in some other, other places as well. Now, the next reaction in glycolysis rearranges glucose into fructose. And so without the oxygens and hydrogens, you can't really see it. It's just going to be another six carbon molecule. Um, you can see it if we're looking at them in the, the next uh, video lecture I do. I, you can kind of see the differences where they, where they change um, to make it look like fructose or make the structure different. So it is a fructose. But we're not doing that here. Um, what we're doing is skipping sort of that step. And we're going to move on to the second ATP that's used, which is really the third, technically, reaction uh, in glycolysis. So in this reaction, same thing's going to happen. An ATP is used. Uh, a phosphate is going to be taken off of that ATP to release a DP. Uh, and then that phosphate is going to be attached to the number one carbon. Two, three, four, five, six number one two three four five six phosphate on the number six carbon remember the glucose six phosphate now we're gonna have a phosphate on the number one carbon so this the name of this molecule here is actually fructose one six diphosphate die for two but um in the organic chemistry nomenclature, we often call it bisphosphate. But it's sometimes synonymous for dye for two. Okay, so it's a, now a fructose, one six, because there's a phosphate on the number one, and the number six. All right, and that's the kind of the first part here of glycolysis. The glucose and two ATP produce a molecule, a sugar molecule, with a phosphate attached to each end. And again, there's still be some, the, all the oxygens and the hydrogens are all still here. Um, they've been rearranged a little bit, um, but they would be here at this point in time. Now what's going to happen is uh, the lysis step. So in this part, what happens is that the gluc, uh, well, actually technically it's fructose, uh, and it's fructose 1,6-diphosphate, uh, or bisphosphate, gets broken into two three-carbon molecules. So notice now the, the way I numbered them. One, two, three, phosphate to the number one carbon. One, two, three, phosphate to the number three carbon. So they're different. They're not, the they're not two of the exact same molecule. They're two different molecules. This molecule here is called glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, or we often uh, refer to it as G3P, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The 3-phosphate is the phosphates on the third carbon. Now, without going through all the, the extra details, this dihydro dihydroxyacetone phosphate is going to be rearranged into a G3P, typically. It can go off into other pathways, but we're going to focus on it uh, being turned into G3P. And so now we're going to have two, we're going to have two of those. Okay, So we're going to have two G3Ps. And that means that everything else that happens from this point forward is going to happen twice. It's going to happen for one G3P, 
and for the other G3P. Um, so as we get to the end part, it's important to pay attention to um, what I'm showing you and that it's going to be times two. So the next step here is fairly important right, in the overall um, view of glycolysis and what happens and what is achieved by glycolysis. Glycolysis is going to give us a gain of ATP. We're going to get some ATP directly out of the process. Now we used ATP, so while we can remove these phosphates and kind of go back to ATP, um, we're not going to gain any. So it's kind of like buying something, you know, um, that costs two dollars and selling it for two dollars, and you didn't really gain or lose anything. You just kind of exchange money and exchange something, and then and then that was it. So here, there's no energy being um, gained by the cell by doing this at, at this point. These molecules are going to be oxidized. So they're going to lose electrons. And as they're oxidized, energy is going to be given off. And as that energy is given off, something important is going to be able to happen. So here's where our NAD pluses come in. So the NAD plus is going to pick up the electrons. So the oxidation is going to give electrons, so two electrons and a proton, to NAD plus, making NAD H. That'll happen for both G3Ps. Okay, so there'll be two of these made. They all happen at this step. Now, the other thing that happens at this step that's very important for glycolysis is that we have here in the cytoplasm of the cell a free phosphate. Free phosphate meaning it's not attached to ATP, it's just a, a phosphate functional group on its own. And the enzyme performing this reaction, the oxidation can take the energy from the oxidation and perform a phosphorylation. So it can actually add this phosphate to the, we'll call it the sugar, um, it's, a, it's a glyceraldehyde. It's going to add the phosphate to it. Um, so we're going to gain a phosphate here without using ATP. That's the key. We're using the energy of oxidation. So what we end up with, so you can kind of see this here, is a three carbon molecule, one, two, three, that already had a phosphate on the number three carbon. But now it's going to have this phosphate attached to the number one carbon. And remember, we're going to get two of these because it's going to happen twice. So we get two NADHs, one for each G3P, uh, and we get two of these molecules. Now, the next two react, well, there's actually several reactions that are going to happen, but there's uh, two major steps here. Um, that we're going to be concerned with. Um, they are going to be the removal now of the phosphates and the production of ATP. Remember, because there's two of these molecules, everything is going to happen twice. So what's going to occur is ADP is going to come in, and we're going to make ATP. So we're going to cut off the phosphate we just added. Just add the phosphate, now it's going to be removed. Uh, it's a substrate level phosphorylation. Uh, it's going to take that and, and give it to ADP. Um, and this, remember, is going to happen twice. So we're going to have two ATP made from this molecule. And then we end up back kind of where we were before. It's not going to be G3P It's because it's going to have been uh, rearranged into a new molecule at this point. Uh, but in our little skeleton, it kind of it kind of looks similar. And then the same thing is going to happen again. Right. We're going to get another... A DP coming in. We're going to have ATP made. That's also going to happen twice because there's two of these, remember? And in the end, we have this three carbon molecule, one, two, three, with no phosphates attached because that one's going to be cut off and added to the, the ATP here. So, and there's going to be two of those. And I'll talk about that. It's the last thing I'm going to do because that's going to be the first part of the, of the next thing we talk about. This is pyruvate. And that's not what it looks like exactly. I'll draw its structure up here in a second. Um, but we'll go through going through the equation and lining it up with this skeletal sketch. Glucose, a six carbon molecule, has a one ATP used by an enzyme called hexakinase and then a phosphate from that ATP added to the glucose to get the glucose six phosphate. It gets rearranged to fructose. 
the fructose gets a second phosphate attached to it, and we have fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. We split it in half into the dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So what we want to know is G3P. That's the one that's going to continue. Um, and there's two of them. I know everything happens twice. We oxidize G3P, creating the NADH molecule. They're going to be carrying the electrons. That's going to happen twice, once for each G3P. So there's two of those. That energy release during that process allows a free phosphate to be attached to the G3P. And now we have three carbon molecule with two phosphates. And there are two of those. So it's like two, really four phosphates here. And so we're going to then make the four ATP. So we take off one phosphate from one, one phosphate from another. We make two ATP. Then it happens again. Take one phosphate off from one, one phosphate off from the other, because there's two of these. Make two more ATP. And we've made four ATP molecules. Now the sugar in the end is a pyruvate molecule. Pyruvate is really, so we didn't really lose, so we still have, we have three oxygens here. Uh, we still have hydrogens here. So this is what the pyruvate structure looks like. And we haven't stripped everything off. It's not just, just a bunch of carbons. I want to make sure that that's clear to you. But it is not, at least uh, in the intro, you know, biology, the general biology class, as you go through glycolysis, you don't have to draw the full structure. If you're in a biochemistry course or a little more advanced, uh, I have a second follow-up lecture to this that goes through in a little more detail that adds in the oxygens and hydrogens. And so you may want to look at that if you need more detail. If you don't need more detail, then you don't need to look at that. And, and this is where all you need. So where we end is with pyruvate, and that's where we're going to begin next, the process of pyruvate oxidation. Things to keep in mind, this happens in the cytoplasm. This happens in the cytoplasm of plant cells. It happens in the cytoplasm of animal cells, in fungal cells, in bacterial cells, in archaea cells. All cells of all living things, for the most part, with few exceptions, run glycolysis, and they run it in the same way. It's why this concept and this process is taught in so many different courses and so many different aspects of biology. It's kind of a core process in the... Um, use of nutrient molecules to produce cellular energy. So it's not creating energy, it's creating molecules that the cell can use for energy. Small cells don't use glucose for energy the same way you don't use bars of gold to buy a television set, right? We use dollar bills um, or credit, you know, but the equivalent to dollar bills. People don't know how to convert diamonds in Best Buy, um, but they knew how to take your cash. So this is the cash of the cell, the ATP, all right? They, all the different proteins, all the different enzymes that need energy in the cell can get the energy from the ATP. They can't get it from the glucose or all these other energy molecules. There's other molecules that have a lot of energy in them. The cells just don't use them this way. They're, they're work, they work off the ATP primarily. Right? And so this is the first process that gets that started where the cell can use glucose as our example here, but other energy molecules can feed into this. Often they feed in here around as the G3P molecule. So this is why that one's uh, important to keep in mind. So next thing is going to be pyruvate oxidation.